The 2025 Subaru Outback. Let's talk about what's new for this latest model year. Then I can talk about the best value proposition in the Subaru lineup and the overall appeal of buying into the Subaru brand. All right, let's get started. For 2025, we don't have any crazy changes here because this vehicle was recently refreshed. So they just added some new standard equipment for the limited trim level. This is kind of your mid-level, upper to mid-level trim. And now you're gonna get a power moonroof, driver focus, distraction mitigation system, navigation, and a heated steering wheel as standard for the limited trim in 2025. Other than that, they made the EyeSight driver assist technology standard across the board for every trim level of the Outback, and the price will remain the same. It's not gonna go up for 2025. And that's really it for all of your changes, but is the limited trim level worth it? Well, I would say yes. I think just about every trim level of the Outback will appeal to someone for different reasons. Personally, what I like about Subaru is you don't need to go up the food chain too much to get all of your useful features. So in my opinion, just going up one level from the base, which is the premium trim level, will offer most buyers all the pragmatic features that they're going to need. So right now you can just go to the Subaru website. You can see all the various trim levels because that's not gonna change in 2025. And you can see that a premium model is gonna start at $31,195. Dollars. That's really not bad considering what you're getting with this vehicle. I've always liked the Outback. Yes, I know most Subarus look a little weird, but for whatever reason, the Outback just stands out to me and it's got that wagon shape. In fact, I think it is technically qualified as a wagon. It still has the same excellent 8.7 inches of ground clearance like many other Subarus, but the Outback from what I've heard it has a slightly lower step in height compared to a vehicle such as the Subaru Forester. So if you like that sensation that you're sitting up a little bit higher, the Forester might be one to look into. I mean, sit in both, but the Outback has a more elongated shape. It's more of a wagon-esque feel. And the premium trim level of the Outback is gonna come with 10-way power adjustable driver's seat. You're gonna get your heated seats in the front, your 11.6 inch infotainment screen with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. And you are going to get cloth seats with the premium. You have two engine options. You have the two and a half liter naturally aspirated flat four with 182 horsepower and 176 pounds feet of torque. That's what you're gonna be getting with the premium trim and the regular limited slash touring as well. This engine will give you 26 MPG on the city and 32 MPG out on the highway. That's not exactly the best, it's certainly okay, but considering the fact that all of these engines are made into a CVT transmission, I just expect it a little bit better because usually when you have a CVT transmission, you're supposed to get much better real world fuel economy, but it is what it is. And if you're concerned about the CVT, well, <laughs> You know, everyone mocks and scoffs Nissan for their usage of the CVT, but nobody bats an eyelid when Subaru, Honda, and Toyota utilize a CVT. But if you're really that concerned, just pay up for the extended warranty and just call it a day. So that's basically your premium trim. The Limited is cool. And as we saw for 2025, we got a few new features as well. But this is also where you're going to get the leather trimmed seats the Harman Kardon audio system, the hands-free power lift gate in the back, and you're also going to get an eight-way power passenger seat as well. So those are all great features, and that's gonna be around 35 grand. So for those of you who find a lot of value in all of the features that I just mentioned, it does make sense to step up to the limited. The touring, obviously a lot more money. You're at 40 grand and you still have the naturally aspirated four cylinder engine, but you're gonna get Napa leather seats with the touring and ventilated seats in the front. Then starting with the Onyx edition and up, you're gonna get that turbo four cylinder with 260 horsepower. Subaru does claim that you can use regular fuel with that turbo boxer engine, but I don't know. I just feel like for most people looking into an economy brand like Subaru, they're better off with the less complex naturally aspirated engine setup. I do love the wilderness with the 9.5 inches of ground clearance and it does look pretty cool. But again, 
40 grand, that's a lot of money. Then we have the limited and the touring models that's also available with the turbo boxer four cylinder engine. It is going to give you that luxurious and effortless feel out on the road, but it's up to you if you wanna pay up for it. But as you can see, there's something here for everyone and you can't really blame anyone for choosing any of these models, but I would definitely avoid the pure base model. I don't think that's worth it. And you know, just try and negotiate like one or $2,000 off of MSRP because Subaru dealerships, they are pretty chill to work with. In fact, that's a huge selling point for a lot of people. They love the dealer experience with Subaru and that's another part of the appeal when buying into the Subaru brand. You get excellent dealer support and in my BRZ video I did a few months ago a lot of people specifically told me that they chose the Subaru BRZ over the Toyota GR86 simply because they knew Subaru would offer a better dealer experience. Many people said that they treat you like a Mercedes-Benz customer when you walk into Subaru, so that is truly great. That's what I'm saying. If you like this vehicle, this Outback, and you want to get it as your family vehicle, do it. Pay up for the extended warranty if you know you're going to keep this for 10 plus years. And yeah, it's a nice little package. And as you can see, good value throughout the lineup. Whether you're at the lower end, like you're looking into the premium, or you're looking at a mid-level model like the limited or even the turbo and the wilderness models they're all really cool if you can negotiate a grand or two off that's even better and in the description box below i'll have a free leasing calculator provided to you by auto companion i'm just throwing that out there as a resource if you are interested but in all honesty i think you're better off just paying cash for this or taking advantage of subaru's finance deal which is like 1.9 percent for 48 months I would probably do that, get this thing paid off as soon as possible and enjoy a very capable family vehicle. Because yes, these things are properly capable. They have one of the best all wheel drive systems. They offer that to you as standard and it's still an IIHS top safety pick. So I appreciate that. The only other thing is also consider looking into the 2024 Subaru Forester. That vehicle is still made in Japan and it has separated climate controls for the lower trim level. So if you appreciate that, definitely look into that Forester because the rest of the Subaru lineup, it has that 11.6 inch display and not everyone likes that because all the climate control, everything is embedded into that touchscreen. That's the only real drawback and the only thing I don't like about Subarus. I wish they would at least give you the physical climate controls for the lower models like the premiums and the base models. The base model just comes with like two screens that's separated. You have a bit more physical controls, but it's just weird. I don't know why Subaru does it that way, but hopefully you found value with this content. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're currently a Subaru owner, let us know in the comment section how it's been holding up for you. How's the dealer experience? And thanks so much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye.